And now for the final part, which is about graceful termination. So at the moment we have to uh, kill the execution with control, uh, with control C from the terminal. That's fine. That's something quite common in, in terminal uh, based applications. The problem with that is that we're not gracefully terminating the, 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 the program, the execution, we're just uh, cutting it um, at, a random, at a random point. So there might be values still being processed or coming from URL generator or being processed in, processed in status checker. It might be that status checker is waiting for a, um, a status code to come back from a, from a get request. It might be that we're ready to print uh, on, uh, from on the on the screen from printer, and and that doesn't uh, doesn't get captured by a determination as it works right now. So what we'd really like to to have, and this is just one way of looking at this problem, is the user will send a an interruption via Control C, for example. We'll then stop the generator from uh, generating new values, and then there's many different ways of handling termination at this point. What we'll look at in this in this session is how we can do it by timing out um, all the fibers downstream from the generator. And so what we'll do is we'll say, let's uh, define a time a timeout interval for, um, for our fibers to just uh, shut down if nothing happens for a while. And the main fiber is just gonna be one of them. We're just gonna give a bit more time to the main fiber to time out than uh, than others and when I talk about timing out of course it, there must be some sort of tick that keeps on being received by all these components um, in order for us to be able to know that everything is going all right in the case of status checkers stats logger and printer that's going to be data coming in from the channel they're reading from in the case of main we actually need something slightly different and that's where uh, heartbeats actually uh, come into play so first thing we'll do is we'll look into how we can deal with signals in uh, in Crystal. So if I go to the uh, actual Crystal API, not Crystal, not Crystal Palace. All right, going to the API. Notice that the version is the latest, so I'm okay with searching. And then I'm gonna look for signal. There we go. Uh, Turns out the first example is exactly what we want. We want to define a trap for control C, which is a signal int, uh, and we can do that at the very top of our uh, main file. So if I go back to URL checker, we can just say, not really at the very top, but as soon as possible, we can say signal int trap do, uh, and then log something shutting down and then then we need to do something right so first of all I've done, I've done nothing right I'm just um, uh, capturing the um, input from from the user whenever they press control C that's not uh, that's not gonna change anything that's just gonna print something on the screen but it's to, to just check that we're on the right path um, so that we are actually capturing the input from the user Still compiling, there we go. I'm gonna press Control C. Right, and if we look at the logs, that's pretty interesting. From the main, we say we say shutting down. And then of course, things just go on like before because we're just printing and not doing anything else. So I'm just gonna Control C again, but actually I have to um, rerun, like kill the, um, kill the task completely. So what do we do when we when we log uh, when when we capture the control C? Well, what we want to do is we want to going back to the drawing at the top. What we want to do is we want to um, kill the generator. So we just want to make sure that the generator doesn't produce any more URLs, so that we can time out all the tasks downstream. Also, let me check. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll define a an interrupt stream channel. And because we don't care about what gets sent in the channel, we just needed to signal that we should just terminate 
just stop generating URLs. I'm just gonna say it's a channel nil. And what I'll do is inside every, I'm gonna make sure we can pass an interrupt channel. And we'll see how we can use this to um, to prevent the uh, uh, cyclic task from generating new values. So I'll log shutting down and then I'll also interrupt dot send nil. And that's the first part of it, right? So whenever the user press control C, we log shutting down, we then send a signal to our interrupt channel. Who is listening from the uh, inter to the interrupt channel? Well, that's the fiber spawned inside the every. So if I go to concurrency util and just do myself a favor for a second, just define a module concurrency util around every now that the module is gonna grow a bit. I'm just gonna make sure that this is aligned. And then I'm gonna make sure that we pass the interrupt, interrupt, which is a channel nil. Right, now that the signature is correct. We're also gonna make sure that we actually have a nice name so that we can log something whenever we, the shutdown happens. So I'm gonna say, this is called name generator. Or we could pass the name from the, as one of the, as one of the arguments. But for now, just to simplify, let's just go for spawn generator, okay? Right. Now, how do we listen to the interrupt channel, but also keep on doing our job um, of uh, just calling the block, sleeping for a while, and then um, moving on to the next to the next iteration. Well, in order to uh, get out of this um, situation, we need to define a new component in our concurrency util, and that's a timer. A timer will take a time span and and will return a channel new. So this is what we're returning to the callers of timer. And because we want to return exactly the, that channel, I'm gonna use the tap method, which just, which just returns the, um, the object invoking. And I'm just gonna, and passes in the object itself. So what we'll do here is, and this is how a timer works, we're gonna spawn <clears throat> A timer object I'm just gonna call it name timer we're gonna have quite a few of these and then inside the spawn I'm just gonna do ch dot send new that's the only thing we can do but we only send after we'll be we've been sleeping for a while Hopefully this will get a bit clearer in a second. So whenever we call timer, say two seconds, what happens is we return a channel where we, um, where, and, and, the, there's gonna, and we define a fiber that will sleep for the given amount of time. And then once the time is uh, passed, it will just notify the channel by sending nil. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if no one is listening to this, uh, to this channel that we're returning, then we have a bit of a problem because the spawn, uh, the spawn fiber is just going to be waiting for someone to read from that um, from the from the channel itself. We'd like to avoid that because, as we'll see in the way we use timers, timers are often disposable. So we say if a message arrives on the so if the timer expires, then uh, then break from a from a loop. Otherwise, just keep on doing what you're doing. That, that, that means we're gonna generate quite a few uh, timer objects. So what I'll do is, and this is the first time we do this in this uh, set of videos, you will, I'm gonna set the channel as a buffered channel with a size of one, meaning that whenever we call ch.sendNil, we're not gonna be blocking on 
uh, on the channel uh, waiting for someone to read from that value but we're just gonna move on with our life and just drop the value into the channel and just terminate that's gonna make a big difference uh, in uh, 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 in the way we uh, create fibers and, and uh, turn them off. We'll talk about how we can investigate uh, fiber leaks or, or if you want the growth, uh, indefinite growth of fibers in our, in our program. But for the time being, let's just uh, observe that we are, this number one is there for a reason. This size one is there for a reason. Right. Um, now, how do we uh, leverage our timer well we have a very nice statement in uh, um, in uh, crystal that allows us to allows us to uh, select between different different channels and basically read from the first channel that returns a value and the syntax is something that you might uh, find similar to a, a case statement so we say something like when when timer period dot receive then what we want to do is we want to call block dot call whereas whenever interrupt receives then we want to uh, log something maybe uh, logger Shutting down, and again, because we have our diagnostic logger, it should be okay to just to not add any further information. And then, just a note: uh, you remember how we said if we require diagnostic logger, which is same folder, I think. I remember, we just include sorry, extend logging and that defines a, a logger method but that method is defined on the module itself so it's defined on the self right so whenever we want to call logger here we actually have to prepend it with uh, concurrency util which is the name of the module there are smarter ways of doing this but for now let's just be happy with this i'm also going to collapse this so we have a bit more space so to recap uh, select statement the select statement will just pick the value from the first uh, channel that receives something or sends something we'll see that uh, in some other session so we just uh, time uh, the period whenever the period has expired we call block and if an interruption arrives then we lock we log shut down and also we break from um, from this uh, loop where's the loop the loop is to be defined by us because I think I deleted it at some point while refactoring. You can actually verify that. Yeah, that was in the previous code. Okay, now let's see if this works. If this works, then we're gonna see a bit of log where we say that we are shutting down the, um, the sender not only that, but we're also, uh, but we're also gonna see uh, no more sending URLs uh, log lines. And in the meantime, back to every, every is not defined just because now we put everything inside a module. So I'm just gonna be including concurrency util and that should make the compiler happy. We're almost at the end of the session. Quite a lot to go through. And let's keep an eye on the logger. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. Okay. Okay, almost there. And once we start, there we go. So we're starting and I'm also seeing a bunch of tables being printed. Now, 
Let's look at what happens when we control C. So we shut down the generator. And as you can see, we're not seeing any sending URLs anymore, meaning uh, we, we managed to um, get to the point where we're halting the generation of new values. So that's success for us. Now, the part that is missing is the one where we actually time out all of the fibers waiting for values downstream of the generator. But I have to say, it's a bit late. There's still a lot to go through. So what I'll do is I'll just wrap, wrap it up here and we'll just continue from this very point in the next session next week. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and don't forget to leave comments and just let me know what you'd like to see in the future sessions, especially with a focus on concurrency and uh, how we deal with fibers. Have a good night.